Good morning, and welcome to Children's Ministry at the Fort Bend Church. I am Glendora Chambers. It's prayer time. Let us pray. Dear God, please hear our prayer. We praise your holy name. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Bible and our church. We thank you for our pastor and our parents. We thank you for our teachers and our friends. We love you, God, our Father. Dear God, help us to obey you and make you smile. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing, This Is The Day. In our Bible story today, we will hear about Israel's first king. A king is supposed to take care of and lead his people well. We will also hear about a man looking for his father's lost donkeys. Have you ever tasted olive oil? Maybe your parents used it to cook. Sometimes olive oil is used to take care of someone's skin or hair. Long ago, when someone was chosen to be king, the priest would pour sweet-smelling olive oil on the king's head to show God had chosen him. It might have felt as smooth and soft as this olive oil on your skin. The Bible is God's word. The Bible tells us about who God is and what he is like. Today, we are reading from the book of 1 Samuel in the Old Testament. Samuel was a young boy when God chose him to be a prophet and a judge for the people of Israel. Let's watch the Bible story. Israel demanded a king from 1 Samuel 8 through 10. Hi everyone, it's me, Megan, and this is Jesse. Hi! Uh, Megan, what are you drinking? I am drinking a smoothie. 
Mm. Ooh, can I have some? I really don't think you would like this smoothie, Jesse. Oh, come on, Megan, please, 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 please. I don't know, Jesse. It has spinach in it. I'm sure I will like it. Please, Megan, please. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Ugh, that is terrible. I tried to warn you, Jesse. I should have listened to you. Yep, just like the Israelites in today's Bible story should have listened. The Israelites decided they wanted a king like the nations around them, but God was their king. They didn't need a human king to rule over them, but they didn't listen. Let's find out what happened. Samuel was a judge in Israel for many years. As a judge, Samuel's job was to make important decisions and lead God's people. Samuel was getting old, so he chose his sons to be judges. But Samuel's sons were not good judges. Some of the leaders in Israel told Samuel, You are a good judge, but your sons are not like you. We don't want them to lead us. The people around us have a king. We want a king too. Samuel did not know what to say, so he prayed to God. God said, Samuel, do not feel bad. They are not saying they do not want you as their leader. They are saying they do not want me. Give the people a king, but warn them what an earthly king can do. Samuel warned the Israelites that they would have to do whatever the king wanted. A king could make their sons serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for him, or he could take away their fields and servants. Still, the Israelites did not care. Give us a king, they said. So God told Samuel to give the people what they wanted. Then Samuel told the leaders of Israel to go back to their cities and wait for a king. Later, a man named Saul came to Samuel. Saul was tall and handsome. He was looking for his father's missing donkeys. Samuel invited Saul to have dinner with him. He told Saul that his family would be important to everyone in Israel. Saul didn't understand. He wasn't from a big family. His tribe, the tribe of Benjamin, was the smallest tribe in Israel. Still, Samuel gave Saul the best spot at his dinner table. The next morning, Samuel poured oil on Saul's head. You will be king, Samuel said. Samuel gave Saul some instructions and sent him home. The Spirit of God was with Saul. The Israelites did not trust God. They wanted a king. God gave the Israelites a king but he had a plan to send his son Jesus to be king over the whole world. Jesus would be the perfect king. Jesus would bring peace and save people from sin. Our Christ connection tell us that the Israelites did not trust God. They wanted a king. God gave the Israelite a king, but he had a plan to send his son, Jesus, to be king over the whole world. Jesus would be the perfect king. Jesus would bring peace and save people from sin. Do you remember what it was like when the Israelites went to, into the land God had promised them? God had given his people his laws, but most of the time, the people did whatever they wanted to do. God gave his people judges to help them do what was right and good. God chose Samuel to be a prophet and judge when Samuel was a young boy. The people of Israel thought Samuel did a great job, but what did they want? I'll give you a clue. He wears a crown and gets to live in a palace. Who is it? A king. That's right. 
The Israelites wanted a king like the other nations around them. Were the Israelites supposed to be like the other nations? No. God had a special plan for his people to love and worship him. God was supposed to be their king. God told Samuel that the people were really saying they didn't trust God to lead them anymore. Do you remember what God told Samuel? God told Samuel to tell the Israelites all the things that a human king would make them do. Once they got a king, they would have to obey him. But the people wanted a king anyway. Do you remember whom God chose to be their king? That's right, Saul. Samuel poured oil on Saul's head to show that he would be the first king of Israel. God's spirit was with Saul and he went home. The new key passage is from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who saw a vision of God's throne. He knew that God is holy, amazing, and powerful. There is no king like the Lord. Now repeat the new key passage after me. My eyes have seen the Lord, Isaiah 6 and 5. Let's sing the key passage song, Woe is me and our worship song.
It is so much fun singing the Key Passage song. I hope you sing it this week because it is a great way to help you remember our key passage. When we think about how holy God is, we see how different he is from the people he made. God cannot sin or do what is wrong. Sadly, we, chose, we choose to make wrong choices. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. We cannot be with God because of our sin. This is our big picture question. Why does sin separate us from God? The answer says, because God is holy. God loves us so much, he sent his son Jesus to bring us back to him. This is a map of the United States of America. Long before the United States was a country, Native Americans lived in the land. The Native Americans didn't know about the Bible or Jesus. A man named David Brainerd knew that the Native Americans needed Jesus, so he started trying to learn their language. It was hard. People did not understand why David cared so much about the Native Americans, but David knew God loved them. Because David told them about Jesus, Native Americans began to trust Jesus. Other missionaries decided to keep teaching Native Americans about God too. Today, Native Americans still need to hear the good news about Jesus. Now let's close in prayer. Let us pray. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be our king. Jesus, thank you for bringing us, for bringing us peace and saving us from sin. Help us love and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. After the Missions Moment video, work on your activity page with an adult. This week, I want you to pray that more Native Americans will trust in Jesus. Remember to subscribe to the Fort Bend Church YouTube channel. Like and share this week's video. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. In the United States of America, during the 1700s, conflict between Native American people and European settlers was common. These two groups came from different cultures and held very different beliefs. But one man, David Brainerd, knew something both groups needed, the gospel. In 1742, David Brainerd became one of the first American missionaries to share the gospel with Native American people in their own language. At first, the work was slow. It was hard. David dealt with illness. He was mistreated by those who did not understand why he was sharing the gospel with Native American tribes. Still, David continued trusting God. He continued to learn the language of the tribe he was serving. David would wait three years before he would see the first Native American accept Jesus as his savior. Soon, many more would follow. David Brainerd died a year later, but his legacy continues today. Missionaries are reaching more Native American people with the gospel and many Native American believers are sharing the good news of Jesus with their tribes and beyond. I care not where or how I lived or what hardships I went through so I could but gain souls to Christ.